We're now in our third part of our discussion about compilation of educational philosophers and their contributions to education. So far, we have already discussed 27 educators and we still have more to talk about today. First is Robert Gagne. He is an American educational psychologist who is best known for his concept, Conditions of Learning. This theory stipulates that there are several different types or levels of learning. These events should satisfy or provide the necessary conditions for learning and serve as the basis for designing instruction and selecting appropriate media. Kurt Lewin He is a German-born American social psychologist known for his field theory of behavior which holds that human behavior is a function of an individual psychological environment. Lewin is known as the father of modern social psychology because of his pioneering work that utilized scientific methods and experimentation to look at social behavior. Lewin's theory is called field theory, which believes that a holistic investigation of human behavior and learning must include the environment in which the learning is taking place, including the psychological environment of the learner and others with whom he interacts. This theory regards learning as a relativistic process by which a learner develops new insight or changes old ones. Max Veltheimer. He is a Czech-born psychologist and philosopher who is one of the founders with Kurt Kafka and Wolfgang Kohler of Gestalt Psychology. He created a five phenomenon which forms the basis of Gestalt Psychology. The so-called five phenomenon is an illusion of movement that arises when stationary objects, light bulbs for example, are placed side by side and illuminated rapidly one after another. Other. This figure is called beta movement, often used in billboard displays, in which an object is perceived as moving when in fact a series of stationary images is being presented. This is also termed apparent motion and is the basis of movies and television. However, at faster alternation rates and if the distance between the stimuli is just right and illusory object, the same color as the background is seen moving between the two stimuli and alternately occluding them. Max's work created a foundation of psychological theory and his findings are presented in his book Productive Thinking. William James James was an American psychologist and philosopher who is sometimes referred to as the father of American psychology. His intellectual pursuits were diverse and he relied heavily on his personal experiences when crafting his theories. With an approach to psychology that was based firmly on his pragmatic philosophy, he produced a body of work that is still viable to many. Pragmatism and functionalism are two philosophies William James used to further his understanding of the world around him. He is credited as one of the founders of the School of American Pragmatism. James established the methods of introspection on a scientific basis and applied the spirit and methods of psychology in teaching. Knowledge of psychology aids teachers in numerous ways. James is also known for his concepts radical empiricism and pure experience. He states that radical empiricism consists of a postulate, a statement of fact, and a conclusion. Hollis Caswell. He was an American educator who became an authority on curriculum planning in schools. He directed surveys of curriculum practices in several school systems and wrote several books on the subject. Caswell was one of the major designers and curriculum consultant of the Virginia Plan, a statewide curriculum revision program in America and was showcased as a model effectively involving teachers, students, administrators in a program of improving education for all students in public schools. It was widely copied in the other states where Caswell and his students were consulted during 1930s and early 1940s. Caswell used social functions approach in curriculum planning and development. He stated that it is necessary to build a curriculum that is related to social problems and needs and concerned with the immediate as well as potential interest of the child within a meaningful, systematic order of knowledge. John Franklin Bobbitt he was a North American educationist, a university professor, and a writer. He also taught school from 1903 to 1907 at the Philippine Normal School in Manila. 
Bobbitt was a social efficiency advocate who saw the curriculum as a means for preparing students for their adult roles in the new industrial society. He authored the curriculum and how to make a curriculum. In his book, Bobbitt tells of a personal experience that caused him to look at curriculum from the point of view of social needs rather than mere academic study. Bobbitt developed a theory of curriculum development and formulated five steps in curriculum making. Step 1 dealt with separating the broad range of human experience into major fields. Step 2 was to break down the fields into their more specific activities. The third step was to derive the objectives of education from statements of the abilities required to perform the activities. The fourth step was to select from the list of objectives those which were to serve as the basis for planning pupil activities. And the final step was to lay out the kinds of activities, experiences, and opportunities involved in attaining the objectives. Wilhelm Wundt He's a German physiologist and psychologist who is generally acknowledged as the founder of experimental psychology. Wundt's approach became known as structuralism because he used experimental methods to find the basic building blocks of thought and investigate how they interacted. To do this, he studied sensation and perception, breaking participants' observation of objects, images, and events down into constituent parts in the same way that an anatomy would study a body trying to find its constituent parts and how they interact. Later, he adapted and developed a process called introspection to infer more about the nature of the processes involved. The term introspection can be used to describe both an informal reflection process and a more formalized experimental approach that was used early on in psychology's history. In everyday use, introspection is a way of looking inward and examining one's internal thoughts and feelings. As a research tool, however, the process was much more controlled and structured. I want to keep my video short so we'll have a continuation of this in the next video. Please keep notified by clicking the subscribe button. Until then, 